We spent a lot of time talking about rumors and leaks surrounding the Nintendo Switch 2. But what we haven't done is talk about what the system actually needs to do in order to be successful. What does success even look like for this system? All right, well, let's set a baseline here and say Nintendo's own goal is simply to match the current sales level of the Nintendo Switch, something Nintendo has never really been able to do when dealing with sequel systems in the past. Now, is this possible? Well, of course it is. We see PlayStation do it all the time. But we need to get a few things out of the way right off the bat that are just obvious and don't really need a ton of additional explanation. So these aren't part of the top five, but they're a given. The system obviously needs to be powerful enough. Enough just means that it's in a position, maybe even better than the Switch itself was, to get downported versions of multi-platform games. The other obvious, and doesn't really need additional explanation, is the system needs to be backwards compatible. This is something that Nintendo has done quite consistently for at least one generation in the past, but I don't think we really need more explanation. These are just standard expectations and have been beaten to death all over YouTube and in many of the YouTube rumors and leaks around Switch 2. Instead, what I want to do is give you five major things Nintendo Switch must do in order to guarantee success beyond the things their systems have almost always done. The first thing, a universal achievement system. Look, I don't personally care about gamer scores and platinum trophies, but many folks out there obviously do care, be it game developers or even gamers themselves. This is a bog standard feature that exists on nearly every single platform out there, but Nintendo. Now don't get me wrong, there are certainly Nintendo games that have achievements baked in, and sometimes those achievements extend into my Nintendo, where you can earn platinum and gold coins. That's actually kind of exciting because with that system, you can redeem coins for real world items or even digital currency. You can get like desktop backgrounds and bookmarks and stickers and pins, even a keychain here and there, or obviously that digital currency to use on the eShop with your gold coins. But it's not that trackable on your actual system. You have to log into a website and it's not easily accessible either to know that you've attained that achievement. This means there's no true support for all games to have this without each game custom building in this experience. It makes it a hassle for third parties or indie developers to support such systems. And it also means most of Nintendo's own games do not offer anything like this. While we can all ignore achievements and just play, for those that like and enjoy them, it should simply be universal and be at the Nintendo account and or system UI level like it is for pretty much everyone else. It may not be my cup of tea and I don't care about it, but there is a reason it's an industry standard. A lot of people like it. Now, before we dive into the other features Nintendo Switch 2 needs to have, hey, if you're new to the channel, I would appreciate it if you subscribe so we can continue to bring you more content just like this. We have some one-off goals out there trying to get to 150,000 subscribers. And why not drop a like on this video because I hear every new like you drop on the video leads to another fish being born in the ocean. I, I, I mean, they're probably being born anyways, but. So the second big feature the Nintendo Switch 2 absolutely needs to have to guarantee success is modernized online functionality. Look, we can go back and forth on the merits of peer-to-peer -peer gaming or everyone joining a server to play. We can also talk about Nintendo's old gaming servers versus their new ones, or maybe even another server system they could launch in the future. These are things that every platform holder struggles with, and individual games even have problems dealing with. Hey, is peer-to-peer -peer the best way? Is servers the best way? Do we use our servers? Do we use their servers? Again, Everyone deals with this problem, so it's not entirely Nintendo exclusive when it comes to that issue. However, what is, is the lack of modernized features. We live in a world where we know for the next decade we are getting all future Call of Duty games. We live in a world where Nintendo's biggest games often require or have massive online multiplayer components, yet... We also live in a world where Nintendo charges money for an online service that lacks some very basic functionality. Things that can make gaming with multi-platform games on Switch feel inferior. 
This should be fixed on Switch 2. We not only need to get local voice chat with a universal system that also enables us to have chat lobbies outside of games, just like everyone else, we also have to be able to message our friends. These are two very basic features everyone has had for decades, yet Nintendo is afraid, even though a simple terms of service can protect them legally from these interactions. Nintendo does have a fairly robust parental control system in place, and they can simply give parents the ability to turn off said features on our children's accounts and systems if they are worried about that. And that is something other platforms allow parents to do already. But we need that modern system in place. This will encourage more third-party support, but more than that, it will also ensure you get the full gaming experience on Switch 2, just like everywhere else. Bluetooth headphone support needs to be there day one, but this time headset support. We need the ability to also plug in a headset right into our controllers too. It's time to stop ignoring one of the biggest appeals of gaming on consoles and PC versus, I don't know, gaming on phones, bringing people closer together while gaming. This is a must. Also, Nintendo, you put a lot of really cool stats about playtime and other unique things in the parental app. Just make that accessible on the console. As a parent, I shouldn't need to have my own account registered to the parental app so I get that little parental app warning every time I boot up my Switch just so I can have the most up-to-date statistics on my account. Again, this stuff should be available locally on the system. Modernize your stuff. Now, this next one and the third option is a given for a few reasons, but... It is essential for success because it's a consistent frustration factor on the current switch that might put off people from getting the next system if it's not fixed. They need to fix the eShop. Look, the eShop is broken. It's a mess. And this is inexcusable for another generation. Nintendo, like most video game companies, are slowly transitioning to a digital age of gaming. But that being the case, they need to make sure that using the eShop feels fun exciting, and most importantly, snappy. For all the issues the Nintendo eShop has, the largest is how clunky it feels just to navigate it. This cannot go on for another generation, and it starts probably by making the eShop a local application instead of a web browser. Yeah, if you didn't know, the eShop on Nintendo Switch is literally just a web browser application. This is a huge reason why it's so laggy to use. But beyond the obvious of making it snappier, it needs better navigation. There should be a suggested content area in your face on the homepage of it with your gaming preferences. Like, yeah, they have access to all the games you play and how long you play them. This should be really, really easy to take advantage of that gaming data. Now, I don't know why they don't do this and why we don't have a worthwhile content suggestion feature, but it needs to be there. We have plenty of companies doing this already, and there's no excuse for Nintendo not to do this as well. That's the best way to curate content and generate more sales. So the fourth major thing the Switch 2 absolutely needs is you need to be obvious this is a next generation Switch. This might be the most important thing on the whole list. Look, one of the most heavily debated aspects of the Nintendo Switch 2 is the name. We have all seen the Super Switch suggestions or the new Nintendo Switch play on words from prior Nintendo platforms. We've come up with a ton of new names for what's next, but that don't even use the Switch brand at all. Nintendo has always done a great job at absolutely confusing consumer bases with their naming conventions and completely abandoning household brand names in the process. Now there's some exceptions. They did use the Wii U, which kept the Wii brand, but in a way that made it sound like an accessory. The 3DS kept the DS brand, but how did we go from DS to a 3DS? Is that three screens? Is that a 3D screen, but it still has two screens? Why is the three in front of the DS? Is that just another DS like the DSi? Even names like the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Is that just a new version of the Nintendo Entertainment System? Or is it the next generation system? And what about the Nintendo 64? What the heck is that? Nintendo probably has some of the strangest naming conventions of all console makers. 
And I said, probably, well, because the Xbox takes the cake there. How do you go from Xbox to Xbox 360, then Xbox One, One S, and X, again, mid-gen upgrades for some reason, then get confused with Xbox Series X and S? I don't get it. And their naming conventions are even worse than Nintendo's. Maybe that was something to do with their lack of sales at this point. If the next Nintendo system is another system that docks with your TV and can be taken on the go, which is what we're led to believe, we don't need to overcomplicate the marketing. Call it a Nintendo Switch 2. It's simple. It's easily understandable. And more importantly, it's an industry standard across the tech space. It clearly indicates this is the next generation Nintendo Switch. People understand it. They know what the Switch is, and they like it, and now they know what the newest and shiniest version that's better. There is a reason numbers are at the core of every piece of consumer tech. It just works. But this goes beyond the name. It needs to feel like a Switch in terms of form factor and functionality, but it also needs its own defining characteristics. That way, when you place the Switch 2 next to, say, I don't know, a Nintendo Switch OLED, you can instantly tell at a glance which one is which. But how do you get that? Well, there are many ways. We have the colored button theory out there, where the right Joy-Con would have colored ABXY buttons. That would certainly help. But is it enough? The easiest way to do this is probably with the controller design overall. There has to be something different about what is effectively the Joy-Con 2, but it can't just be under the hood. It has to be from an aesthetic perspective. Maybe you have more ergonomic you know, controllers with a handle and the slide controllers off give it a more unique feel and less of a need for grips, but... What about instant two-player controllers? Maybe you can possibly make the Joy-Con 2s have detachable handles? I don't know. It's just food for thought. Of course, this is just a one-off idea. Yeah, Nintendo could easily come up with something a lot better in terms of differentiating the look. Maybe instead of the tablet being encased in black, it's encased in gray instead, making it stand out. The dock could be completely redesigned with an entirely new and fresh look, too. Yes, improvements under the hood to the Joy-Cons are expected, but we need this system to stand out just a little. Enough that when you put them side by side, you know which system is which. Nintendo's design teams are great, and I'm sure this is something they have already thought about. Now lastly, this might be the least important one. That's why I'm saving it for last, but it's also something that helps the Switch 2 go beyond the Nintendo Switch. Don't be afraid to spend for the best. No, we're not talking about price point. Another widely debated aspect, the totality of how appealing the whole package is will determine what price point would guarantee success. And yes, we are working with the assumption Nintendo isn't about to slow down their cadence of major releases. They have been able to keep it going for seven years of Switch. I have no doubt they will keep it going on Switch too. This does matter for success, but it's probably a given. I am talking about spending for more. You know how Microsoft is gobbling up studios and PlayStation pays for exclusives like Final Fantasy 16? It's time for Nintendo to open the pocketbooks. Sure, we do get paid exclusives like Live Alive, Astral Chain, and maybe the biggest timed exclusive in Monster Hunter Rise. But it's time to open up those checkbooks for something bigger. Sony paid for From Software to make Bloodborne exclusive. Why not have Nintendo reach out and fully fund a brand new From Software IP built just for them? Why not reach out and offer to help some studios like, say, Rockstar to ensure games like Grand Theft Auto 6 do not skip Switch 2? What I mean isn't for Nintendo to go out there and start buying up studios, but they have the capital to pay for more exclusive games, major ones, from big companies. Now, for the industry on the whole, I never feel like outright buying exclusivity rights is always best for the consumer, but it does have a proven track record of helping platforms be more successful. Nintendo, frankly, doesn't have the chops to make every type of game out there, but that's why opening the checkbook could allow them greater variety with massive AAA games from other companies that give them that grander variety than can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with what they make. I don't have the answer for what and how many of these projects they should fund, but I do think they need to go even bigger than Bayonetta 3, bigger than Astral Chain, 
Monster Hunter is an obvious one again, but why not more? What about an exclusive Assassin's Creed from Ubisoft? Just food for thought. This may seem like the least essential thing to success, but I am getting greedy. I don't just want to see Nintendo Switch 2 be successful. I want it to exceed the previous system. Of course, there is so much more we could dive into, but I don't find anything else that we could talk about as essential as these five core features. However, you may disagree, and whether you do or not, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. So thank you guys so much for being here. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime, and I will catch you in the next video.